This is a small crash course on Lev Vygotsky's sociocultural theory of development. Lev Vygotsky was a Russian man. He was born in 1896, the same year as Piaget. He was a socialist and created new theories based on Marxism, which was quite popular at the time. He was quite prolific. He died quite young in his 30s in 1934, but by then he had published 180 works plus. Vygotsky's basic focus was cognitive development. He studied the changes in the way in which people think as we get older and how we know things differently with age. He studied social interaction, interaction between the developing person and society, and thought this was very important in the development of cognition. His theory is a quantitative theory in that there are no stages. It's development happening gradually all the time over time. You can compare Piaget and Vygotsky. Piaget focuses more on exploration and how internal changes happen through experiments with the environment, but it is a very individual theory. Vygotsky's theory, on the other hand, focuses on social interaction, the participation between people and their cultures and their context. To Piaget, cognition is a set of stored knowledge, so development happens and then learning happens. So you have to get to the right stage before you can learn things at that particular level. To Vygotsky, cognition was a process of learning. So you try to understand the world, and in understanding the world, you develop. To Piaget, cognitive development is universal. Everything happens the same for everyone. It's basically mapped out, and it happens in the same order. Vygotsky believed, on the other hand, that cognitive development depends on the environment. So the society that you're in, the values that are in that society, the tools that are available to you. And I will speak about tools just now. So there are four basic principles underlying Vygotsky's theory. The first is that language plays a crucial role in development. He focused on private speech and internalization. Private speech is speech to oneself, so children talk aloud to themselves, and this guides thinking. They plan actions, and this helps them accomplish tasks. It becomes inner speech over time, so you speak it out loud, and then gradually you learn to think those things to yourself as a child. And children learn to differentiate between speech for other people and speech for themselves. But both of those types of speech are used to influence yourself. So an example would be in any situation, let's say you have a choice between two things. Sometimes you don't just decide what to do. You have an internal dialogue with yourself before anything happens externally. And this is an internal use of private speech. Internalization then, which means bringing an outside thing in, is the process of taking interpersonal relationships and exchanges into oneself. Vygotsky believed that through external activity, i.e. interaction with someone's environment, the person could take outside influence and bring it into themselves, which constituted learning. The second principle is that development can't be separated from social and cultural context. Vygotsky focused on interaction and the tools, both physical and psychological, that were used in relationships with the environment. Interaction was with the more knowledgeable other, which is any person with a better understanding or a higher ability in any subject or thing than the learner has. For example, teachers or other students or even a computer. Social interaction then, according to Vygotsky, leads to continuous changes in thought and behavior. So you're always learning from your environment. Vygotsky identified certain tools that are used in development. So he believed that development depends on the interaction between the individual and other people and the use of tools, and that these cultural tools are passed down through imitative learning or instructed learning or self-regulated learning. These tools are either physical or psychological. Physical tools include physical objects like pens, papers, computers, toys. And then there are psychological tools. Psychological tools include language, writing, maps, signs, art, counting systems, things that are not physical, but also help in the development and learning process. 
To Vygotsky, language was the most important psychological tool. Language acquisition transforms the process of thinking and boosts recognition, so it's very important in learning and transmitting information between people. The third principle is that learning leads to development. As I said before, with Piaget, it was development which leads to learning. With Vygotsky, it's learning that leads to development. So the process of teaching creates learning processes that lead to development. A student can be prepared to learn, but need help to get from the place where they are to the place where they have learned something. And what comes into play here is the zone of proximal development. This is the difference between a person's actual developmental level, what they can do by themselves, and a higher level of development that they can reach under guidance or with collaboration. And what is the case here is that there are things that a person can do already, and there are things that a, a person can learn to do with someone else's help. This is the zone of proximal development. So the more knowledgeable other helps the developing person get from where they are right now to where they can be with help. The fourth principle is that children construct their knowledge. So human behavior is the integration of socially and culturally constructed forms of mediation into human activity. Children use outside social and cultural activities and use them to build on their own knowledge. So according to Vygotsky, this process happens through mediation and scaffolding. In mediation, people use intermediaries to modify the environment. So people use tools and the help of the more knowledgeable other. With scaffolding, Vygotsky stresses learning through the more knowledgeable other. The instructor offers a framework for learning and the student builds on that framework. The student constructs their own solutions and the student and more knowledgeable other share authority. We'll go into an evaluation of Vygotsky. Vygotsky's theory is quite useful in that it considers cultural influence, so it can be used quite widely. It also offers a useful teaching framework. The concept of the zone of proximal development is an interesting teaching tool that people can use. Some of the drawbacks of this theory are that it overlooks the developmental processes that aren't social. For example, genes which may guide development. The theory also assumes that it can apply to all cultures, which may not be the case. And some of the ideas presented in this theory are not always useful or used. For example, scaffolding. Sometimes it is necessary to learn through practice, in which case someone must be taken step by step through the entire process and you cannot be given partial information, which you then build on yourself. And that's Vygotsky.